Hi, this is Dan with IDS GeoRadar. We've got the Forelight here. So, for demo purposes, once you unbox your Forelight, this is what it'll be like. You can pick it up from the front and the back right here, or if you'd like, from the side, white plastic rails. You're going to grab the handles and bring those up. Watch out for the antenna cable. Slide this bar right here all the way up underneath till it makes contact with the handlebar bars. Then you're going to want to use these handles to pull out your uh, poles here to the desired position. So we've got about nine different uh, height positions depending on how high you want your handlebar. I tend to go for some of the higher positions. And then use the push pins to go through and lock that into position. Now. Next on the unit, we are going to want to screw in the antenna cable. That will be on the front left, uh, going on to the front left then of the control box. So you'll unscrew that weather connection on the side. You're going to twist that around until it makes a connection. Screw in your antenna cable, which is going into the antenna itself. Then we're going to undo the LAN port on this side right here. And we are going to input either just a regular Ethernet cable or we provide a heavy duty Ethernet with a, water, a weatherproof tip on there. And you're going to want to take that Ethernet cable and bring it to your PC. So in this demo, I have a larger full size PC as you can see, but you can also use the FCG1 small tablets, whatever you prefer. Next, we're going to plug in your batteries. So the Forlight takes Milwaukee uh, M18 18 volt batteries. It's a hot swappable system, so you can put two or just one battery in. I'm going to put two in for now, but the great thing is when you're running, you're able to hot swap those throughout the day. And then next, what we're going to do is hit the power button. So the power button is going to be right here. On the right side of your control unit, there'll be a red light that comes on. And once that comes on, and if your ethernet's plugged into your computer, I'll show you here on the screen the next steps to take. All right, so once everything is hooked up, we've got the red light on on the DAD controller, which is the analog to digital controller. We have our ethernet cable plugged in. We're gonna go right here to OneVision, which is our acquisition software and I already have it running. Um, but anyways, what we're gonna be looking for is this guy right here. So we've got a few options in the startup page here. So in the settings, we have the option to go through a few different units. We've got the four lights selected right now. You could do the high mod with one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, and four between a 400, 900, or a 200, 600. Our stream C, which is a 32 channel, 600 megahertz system. The stream EM, which is 38 channels of 200, 600 mixed also with a live capture LiDAR as well as the older stream EM there. The stream X, which is all 200 megahertz, or the TESMEC from TESMEC, which is the stream C antenna in a different cart. All right, so we're going to stick with the Forlight 200, 600 right now for this setup. This is where you would do an encoder calibration. If you're going to use the unit, I recommend it. You just hit proceed. Uh, you lay some tape or at least make a mark somewhere on the ground of a starting point. I like the axle of the wheel, the front of the unit, something along those lines. You hit start. It's going to connect. At which point you start pushing or pulling the unit, and it's going to start moving. Once you are done, or let's say you get to the end, you hit stop, you input that distance, and it will then update this encoder resolution. Serial port configuration, uh, this is where you are going to link up your GPS or positioning system. So right now I'm hooked up to COM port 3 at this baud rate. I am collecting a NEMA string. It looks like from the actual internal GPS on this computer that I'm using. So it's not amazing. It's a submeter GPS, uh, but it gets the job done. Or if you're using a Leica GPS, you can hit Xeno Connect right here and get that running. You can also choose right here before you start your survey. If you like grayscale for your B scans, we have black, white, black, white, black, white, uh, a blue and a purple hue. I believe ZCE is green and a bunch of other colors. Uh, PHE is a blue, white, and red, or the Russian color palette. We also have the option to go between metric system and imperial here and pick your distance in feet and yards, depth in inches or feet. We'll just 
uh, stick it to feet for this particular situation. Uh, now when we're ready to go, we're just going to hit on this logo right here. This is going to open up our new project window. So we're going to start a project on the see-through. We have our option here to name it whatever we want. We can name it, you know, test one if you're going to be doing a test. This is also deciding right here where you save the project folder. So you can see the nomenclature normally does the year, the month, the day, and then what project you've done that day is how it automatically saves unless you decide to call it something different and you can also pick where you want to save it. So you can either do a metric wheel, a grid collection, a GPS, GPS with PPS, which is a little more accurate for our multi-channel systems, or a total station for your positioning. Uh, for this situation, we're just going to go metric wheel, and we're going to use the 200-600 antenna. You can see that right here. It's telling me my two channels of data. Now we can also pick our depth range. So if I know, like for me here in Colorado, I don't see too terribly deep. Uh, something like 70 nanoseconds generally tends to work well. Um, if we want to get the highest stacking and the highest sampling, we're going to leave that on 512. If for whatever reason you want to scan at a running speed, you can turn that down to like 256 and get a few less scans. And this scan step right here as well, uh, we're going to leave alone. So we're just going to start the survey. It's going to do a brief configuration. It's going to talk to itself here. If for whatever reason you didn't hook something up right, it will let you know. So this is going to be our basic collection screen here. You will notice at the bottom we have the miles per hour. It gives us all of our information in the bottom left about our system here. So right now uh, I can see I have two antennas, my radar signal and everything. Uh, communication is going well on those uh, HH antennas. I have no positioning system. I have 100% battery because I have brand new batteries in there. And my current swath... Uh, limit uh, and project size limit are not even close to being met yet since I haven't even started. Now to start scanning all you do is hit the start button in the top right. You can start pushing your unit and collecting data. Now as you can see since I turned my nanosecond window down I'll probably want to zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in here to get all my usable data. I'm looking down to about seven feet here which for me is pretty good. Now the left side is going to be the C scan. Since we don't, the computer doesn't know where we're going, it's just tracking our distance here uh, since we don't have a GPS. So generally I turn that off in the bottom right down here if you're just doing a standard line collection. So we're going to push along and we're able to collect data. The yellow line is going to actually be the uh, line on the unit. So if I stop and back up, you will see that yellow line backing up. So I'm collecting over some rebar right now. You can also turn on these guys to help with your distance as well. While you're collecting, you can zoom in and out here, or maybe you get too far zoomed in, you get lost. You can hit this button on the top left to bring your survey back out. See where you are, click and drag. You can mark targets if you want live right here on this side as well. And you can see my speed limit here is about three miles an hour looking at the 600 megahertz antenna. We can also go to the 200 megahertz antenna a little coarser and I will go over the utility here in just a minute. Um, but you can briefly switch between these two as you're scanning if you'd like to see the differences. And there was a deeper target, obviously, that we saw here down right at. It's telling me 4.63 feet. So you'll see in the very bottom right corner, we've got some numbers that are moving around. Those are my X and Y coordinates. Uh, and we can also switch to see what that target looked like in the 200 megahertz here, as well as the 600 megahertz. To make sure that our dielectric is correct, we can also mark this target. So when we do a target mark, you hit the target button, you mark it. I happen to know that this is a sewer line, but we're going to use this right here to do a hyperbola match to get a true expected depth. I'm going to say right around there looks right. So I'm showing actually an expected depth of 3.9. That is going to then change my survey to that depth. And if you want to add more targets, you just keep adding those targets with the target marking feature there. I am going to now switch over to show you a GPS collected survey.
Now, if doing a GPS collected survey, first of all, to get a Google map in the backdrop, you're going to want to be connected to the internet. So a lot of the computers that we supply or sell come with a SIM card uh, installed inside that we can use with a Verizon or AT&T uh, 4G or 3G, 5G data plan. Uh, or you can just use a hotspot off your phone. So we're just going to select a GPS for this particular situation. I've already paired up my internal GPS on this computer. I have a green light here, so I am good to go. You'll see I have not a very great connection, one hertz here, but it is giving me my lat, my long. Um, I'm hooked up to 12 satellites, so I'm getting a decent position. We can also see that we are connected here as well, the 200, 600 megahertz antenna. Our dad controller is good to go. We can change anything here if we want. Maybe let's try to look a little deeper. Let's go 120 nanoseconds on this particular survey. We're gonna leave the samples high in the scan step there. We're gonna start the survey. It's gonna do a calibration here. So it's talking to the system, getting a fix on making sure everything is good to go. So what we're going to do, since now I'm going to have something on this C-scan, since uh, I have the dot here, it does know where I am. I am going to turn on a layer. So for layers, we have our options in Google Satellite, Google Street, Google Terrain, Google Hybrid, OpenStreetMap, Virtual Earth. I tend to like Google Satellite, or let's go to Virtual Earth here. We're going to turn that on, and boom, that found exactly where we are. So I can zoom in a little bit, and there I am. So we can turn on as many of these uh, filters, uh, excuse me, layers as you like, actually, and overlay them from as-built uh, to vector raster files, all kinds of different stuff that you can add in here to have in that C-scan while you're scanning. Now, we can also change if we want to have a bigger C-scan, less data, maybe a smaller C-scan, more data, and we're going to get rolling here. Okay. So now we're collecting quite a bit of data, all the way down to 20 feet now, which is is quite a bit for Colorado. But I'm going to zoom in here to let's say about a six foot range, which is more or less our usable data, and keep going. All right. So you'll see that the yellow line is tracking me on that C scan on the left there. there we got quite a hyperbola hit. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take a look at that in the 600 as well as the 200. And I'm going to pick the 600 to make my target mark. So I happen to know this is a sewer line. I am going to fit this guy. Right here. Okay. So we hit him once. We're going to continue moving. hit that utility again. We are going to mark a target. We know that that is the sewer line again. That looks to be a good hyperbola fit, so we're going to say OK. And you can see it is going to start stringing together that utility. Now, because I'm using a submeter GPS, uh, you can tell that it is not doing a fabulous job at tracking my positioning here and moving around, but if you were to pair up an RTK or a little bit more accurate GPS, you'd be good to go. So that's the basics here on target marking and GPS tracking with the Forelight. Now, once we stop our collection, we can also go through the color palettes. Maybe you prefer something a little more colorful to pick your targets out with. And you can play then with that contrast to get the best view of the targets that you're looking for.